How's it going guys? Today we're going to be talking about a new digital mode that just popped up. Well, it might have been around for a little while, but it's still in development and not many people know about it. So one of my viewers actually sent this in. He sent in the presentation and said, hey, you should uh, you know, do a video over this. People might find it interesting. You might find it interesting. And I did. And that project is called Ribbit. But real quick, guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button below. I'm not going to ask you to like the video until the end because you might not like it. Anyways, this new digital mode is called Ribbit and it is advertised to work on the VHF and UHF band and I'm gonna go into a lot more detail here in just a minute uh, I might show some of the slides that was in the presentation but it's kind of like APRS and it looks like it strives to have the same uh, functionality as APRS uh, it is still in development so all of that's not uh, capable it's not all capable right now of all the things as promised but it is being actively worked on and it is an open source project it is a a uh, protocol or a project developed, um, and I hope I get this name right, by a Pierre Delu. I hope. Uh, I hope I got your name right at the Open Research Institute. It's a digital text message platform for your radio that interfaces with a cell phone. And the idea is kind of like APRS. Uh, your radio will send the signals back and forth, and you have another system that decodes and encodes these messages. Now, what kind of sets Ribbit apart, in my opinion, from what I've seen in the research I've done from APRS and some of those other projects is it's, uh, it's made to be very versatile when it comes to uh, communicating with, say, your cell phone, if it's the, the one decoding the messages and encoding them, because you don't need an audio interface. There is special t care taken when developing the protocol to make it withstand some of the interference that might happen if you just have a cell phone and your radio sitting next to each other and you're piping the audio from one to the other. Um, during the presentation, it was also said that it also uh, withstands Bluetooth compression, YouTube compression, and uh, it works on various modes like FM and single sideband. But we're going to do a demonstration of it today. I'm, I'm going to show you what has been developed so far with the app, how far it's came, and what we can do with it. And we're going to talk about its use case scenario right now and basically the benefits of it. In the future, I'd like to do a comparison video of APRS and range, maybe take some radios out and uh, see how far each of them go um, and compare what the range is like between them and how they withstand some of the interference that might happen. The website for the project and all the links to the programs that we use for the phones will be below. There's no transcription error, so if, the, if you get one of the letters wrong, it, the message just won't work. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I guess there can't be any typos. So if you're using emergency, emergency communications, I guess nothing can be wrong. So that's a plus. And by the way, uh, by what I saw in the presentation right now, the project is uh, specifically doted to, uh, devoted to emergency personnel and areas and stuff like that for uh, communication and, and disaster. So that's kind of what they're gearing toward right now. Uh, another cool little thing, it only takes one second to transmit but you'll see that I have my setup to have a, a nice little preamble. Also, I know I said FM and a single sideband modulation, but it actually supports AM modulation as well. So it's kind of versatile in that way. And I just want to give a, like a nice rundown of the project before we actually do the demonstration. Um, right now, the, uh, the project itself it has like a demo app and um, we're going to show you guys, you know, some of this, what the app looks like. And we're going to use it, but right now it can only send and receive messages. There's also a parrot mode, so you can send a message to another location. And if that location is in parrot mode, it'll just repeat the message back to you. Kind of like a ping, uh, network ping. Um, and there's some settings in there to adjust the sample rate to change the channel. So I assume maybe there'll be like different channels that people can use maybe simultaneously. I'm not sure that wasn't said. Um, but there's also a couple options in there to set like a preamble to the packet. So if you've got another station on the other end using Vox, it'll open that Vox before the, uh, the packet actually comes through. That way it's decoded properly. Anyways, yeah, that's the basics project by uh, Pierre there at the Open Research Institute. It's a messaging app. In the future, some of the stuff, uh, if you guys are really interested in this project, I really highly recommend that you go actually look at the presentation uh, that's in the description, the link to it, because uh, he goes over the future of the project, and it looks like there's some pretty wild stuff going on, maybe like interfacing with the cloud, kind of like APRS is, uh, repeaters linked up with them, uh, the ability to request messages from the repeater from the, like the last 50 messages so that... Uh, if you if you want to get caught up in the conversation, maybe you haven't been picking them up, 
there's that uh, functionality there too. Uh, maybe some even internet relay um, stuff. So looks like there's a lot promised with this, and I could see if this project continues to be developed, uh, it's going to be pretty cool. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into the presentation. I have a I have my Baofeng UV5R and a FT3D uh, R, and we will be using those with two Android phones, which, by the way, there is no iPhone app right now. Uh, there is only the Android app, unfortunately, so for you guys that have iPhones, I don't know, you may be able to download an emulator on your computer, like an Android emulator, but as of right now, there is only the APK for the Android. The app on the phone itself is actually called Rattlegram. Uh, and it was stated on their website that this is because they didn't want to change it to Ribbit until the final uh, production of the app. But anyways, it's called Rattlegram on the Android store, on the Android Google Play store. So if you guys do have Android phones, you can download it. Uh, but the link will be below if you can't find it. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into this demo. This is just <clears throat> this is just a little video I shot on my phone here to show you the app without the camera because the quality is going to get destroyed if I try to film it. But this is the app here, it's called Rattlegram. And once you open it, it's gonna look a lot like this right here. And these are just test messages. This right here was kind of pre-populated in the app. But these are just test messages I was in with. Now, to send a message, you'll actually hit the little bubble icon right you see here, and you'll be able to compose a message. And you'll type it. And once you type it, and you hit the transmit button, you'll hear an audio come over your speaker. And that is the actual um, tone that needs to go over the radio, right? Uh, other than that, under encoder settings, you can adjust the sample rate. By default, it's 8. So um, you can also uh, adjust the leading noise, and by default, that is a quarter of a second. I've changed that to two seconds because I don't worry about transmitting a couple extra seconds right now, and it just helps the voice uh, make sure that uh, the sound gets through. You want to make sure, obviously, that your encoding and outcoding sample rate is the same. You can also change your audio source uh, if you have an external microphone plugged in. There's also a spectrum analyzer. So the spectrum analyzer is pretty cool um, because it'll actually show you kind of like FT8 waterfall, the signals coming through or whatever audio is coming in the room. Um, parrot mode, pretty neat. It will actually make it so that uh, one node will just regurgitate whatever was transmitted to it over again. So I use this when I was testing a lot since I'm only one person. But let's go ahead and get into the actual video part. And what you're witnessing here is probably one of the most jank uh, setups that could have possibly been done. If you're wondering why my Baofeng's connected to a bench power supply, it's because I couldn't find my charger. So this is going to be one of the radio sets, and my FT3D is going to be with another radio setup. And these phones are both running Android, and they have the Rattlegram app open. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this guy into parrot mode and run into the other room, and we're going to transmit and see if the message doesn't pop up on this screen. One quick correction before we start, the bow thing's obviously tied down over here, so it is gonna be working as the Vox radio, and we'll see how it goes, knowing it's a bow thing, see if it can retransmit the message that comes out of here. All right, so what you guys just witnessed there was my FT3D transmitting and this phone picking it up. It decoded the message, if you guys can see their YouTube test, but it looks like the audio, no matter how loud it played through here, didn't go back to the bow thing. What do you know? This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo test. Well, the bow thing's working, but it's not picking up the audio from here. Maybe it's got some filtering, who knows? But we're going to have to, if we're going to do parrot mode, we're going to have to reverse the roles here. This is probably a better way to do it, just so you guys can see what's going on. So now, this guy is going to go off of parrot mode. I'm going to disable that. And I'm going to transmit to this. It's going to go into FD3D with the other cell phone in the other room, and it's automatically going to repeat the message back. So, first thing we're going to do is going to transmit a message. And we're going to say, uh, instead of testing, testing, let's do test from Baofeng. Now, I'm going to hold in the transmit button since we know our box isn't working correctly, and I'm going to hit the transmit button. Once this phone's done transmitting, I'm going to let go of the box here, that way the other radio can repeat our message back. And there 
there we have it. So the, the message here is the one that we sent. And then we have the message right above that. And that is actually the message we got back from the Balfang. Let's do another one. So we're going to type in YouTube test 2. And same thing, we'll transmit. And there we go, YouTube test 2. Now, uh, I don't see anywhere right now to look at the geolocation data of this. Uh, maybe I'm just being a dummy. Oh. So we just found out that actually if you tap these messages, it will retransmit them. So that's pretty handy. Um, or maybe it's the ping. It looks like there's some ping stuff going on here. So the other radio actually just sent us back a ping and we picked it up on accident. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, that's how the technology works. It's a text message service right now, but I could see some uh, other imp uh, implications for it in the future. All right, so that's it for the demonstration. Uh, like I said, the links for the presentation will be down below, and I'll be following this project in the future. You know that we love our digital modes on this channel. So uh, as much as some people might not like that, whatever. But I'll be following this project. I recommend you guys go check out the rabbitradio.org. Uh, they also have a form at the very bottom if you guys, uh, if any of you are, are girls. If any of you are developers or are interested in maybe contributing to the project, they have a little form down there that you can put your information. This is a neat project, and I hope these uh, the devs really continue development, and it would be really awesome to see some of their plans come to fruition. Uh, in the future, we're going to go out and actually do a, um, a test and compare it with APRS and see how the protocol matches up. And like I said, the big benefit over APRS is with APRS, you really need that uh, digital cable. Otherwise, some of the audio can get distorted. And and you can you could try APRS without it. Sometimes it works. But this mode's really made for uh, those without a cable, which is what we kind of like on this channel. We like saving money, right? We're a lot of budget gear focused. Uh, you know, doing a lot with the little that you have. So if you guys are interested, go check out the app. Go check out the website. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll keep following this. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up below. It kind of helps the YouTube algorithm find videos like this, especially when it's real niche ham radio digital modes. Uh, if you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. I want to give a big shout out to my uh, my members here on YouTube. James Jenner, uh, he's been an extra for 18 months, so really thank you so much for that. I know it's been a rough year. I've, I haven't been making many videos, but also Bart Killian, uh Van, and I'm sorry if I destroy your names here, but Van Flickle and Garrett Harton. Could be Garrett, but I think it's Garrett. I'm not good with names. Anyways, I really appreciate you guys for being uh, members on the channel. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for watching, and 73 to you.